ho ho, jingle jangle and rum pum pum. Are you ready for Christmas? Ha <laughs> ha, my name's Super Dave and I'm your host for this year's Jingle Jam. You know, normally every Christmas, BCC Kids Life has a children's program. But this year, since we can't get together, we decided to bring Christmas to you. That's right. We'll have some songs, some activities. You might even see some familiar faces. And you can enjoy it all with your family in the comforts of your own home. So, are you ready to get your jingle jam on? Let's kick things off with a song. So stand up, everybody. Sing out loud. Let's go. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let her be seen, her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven. Hello, welcome to Jingle Jam. My name is Dan, and my co-host, Wayne, is, uh, looks like he's running a little late. You know, that is very, very exactly like him. You know what I heard? I heard that Wayne is taking acting lessons since the last time we got together. Can you believe it? Virtual acting lessons? If he was here, he could tell us all about it. But no matter, because it is Christmas, and we're having an adventurous Christmas. Do you guys have an advent calendar at your home? It's a great calendar that counts down the days to Christmas. Perhaps you have a, a Lego calendar, or perhaps a calendar that has candy in it. 
Each day, you open one of the slots so that you can get excited for the coming Christmas. Advent is all about waiting. Waiting for the excitement to build for Christmas, where we receive the ultimate gift. So are you ready for the excitement of the gift of Christmas? Christmas is the time of year that I can boldly and confidently tell everyone on earth that there is no hope. hope. Exactly. I mean, wait, what? Good day, good day, good day. My name is Reginald Fastidious III, and I am the greatest one-man Shakespearean Bible story reenactor. And I am here so that you shall enjoy my presence and to know that this Christmas there is no hope. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Thusly, all hope is not lost. Yes, it is. No. Yes. No. Yes. Oh, even my appendages wage war against me. Unlike you, Reginald, I know that Christmas is that special time of year where hope reigns. Really? What year have you been living in? Hmm. Well, this has been a very tough year with lots of downs and ups and downs. But as Christmas comes, we have new hope. That's not what the Bible says. What are you talking about? Surprised I've read the Bible? Well, I've been performing it for 10 years, and I finally decided to read it. That's right. Behold, I am the bearer of bad tidings during this happy season. Prepare for the worst. Within this bedazzled binder is a script whence you shall narrate, whilst I present a performance art piece. Art? Performance, that is. You mean I'm supposed to take this script and read it? Thusly, hmm. performance art piece. All right. And I'll read the script, and you do what you do. Precisely. On with the performance art piece. Hmm. You know... I know this is a time when we're supposed to be celebrating Christmas, but when Wayne, I mean Reginald, gets excited, we ought to let him do what he does, and then we can get back to normal more quickly. I have sufficiently prepared to grace the stage. Great. Let's go. In the beginning, God created the universe and all that is in it, including our home, the earth. It was good, but not for long. <laughs> God didn't say that last part. <laughs> then God created the first human, Adam. But God took one of Adam's ribs Ow! and created the first woman, Eve. Ow! I got Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back. Rib! God gave Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden, and life was good. However, <clears throat> however, 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 Adam and Eve broke the only rule God gave them. They took the fruit from a special tree in the garden and ate it. Help! 
We've fallen, and we can't get up. Das it Lied. was at this moment the world became broken. Sin entered the world, and people were separated from God. After that, things kept getting worse. God called an old man named Abraham. Yes, Lord! And promised him he would have as many children as there were stars in the heavens. What? How do you expect me to pay for college? No hope! God's promises came true, but all of Abraham's descendants, the Israelites, were enslaved by the Egyptians. Walk like an Egyptian. Abraham's descendants cried out to God to save them. So God spoke to a, na a man named Moses through a burning bush and told Moses he could convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. God sent terrible plagues, like frogs. Frogs! Eventually, Pharaoh let God's people go, and Moses led them safely by walking through the Red Sea. But the Israelites disobeyed God, so they couldn't enter the land God promised them for 40 years. That's one long time out. No hope! And then they were ruled by bad kings. <laughs> and the Israelites were conquered by the Babylonians. Arm, no hope for you! And... And scene! Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been the Bible story. Merry Christmas. There is no hope. Thank you, thank you. I exit left or right thusly. Hey, hey, wait, wait, Reginald, no. What? First of all, there are tons of stories in the Old Testament that are filled with hope and joy, peace, and love. Huh? The Bible is an amazing story of God's love for us. It starts off a mess, but God has a plan for us to fix it from right from the very start. Did you read what Isaiah wrote? No, I just read what King James wrote. Isaiah was a prophet. He wrote down a promise from God, a promise that gave generations of people hope for the future. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet. This year has been filled with hopelessness. You're right. It has been a really tough season. But some good stuff has happened, too. I don't want you to miss that. Even when things are bad, God is still working for good. That's what Christmas is all about. I thought it began in, in July when the stores started selling Christmas decorations. Actually, it began a long time before that. Why don't you open our first present in our Advent display? Okay, let's see what we got here. A candle? Are we expecting a power outage? No, actually, this candle represents the ultimate hope. That's where we start the Advent wreath. It's a centuries-old tradition for people that light one candle each of the first four weeks of December to help us to remember what Christmas is all about. See, we're losing power. I knew it. All hope is lost. All hope is not lost. We're just going to watch a video. Okay. Hi. 
All right, does everything look ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, we have the candles, the wreath. How long have we been using this <laughs> wreath? A while. On time. Since Emma was little? Yeah. Yes. On long time. All right, um, so let's get started. We're going to read out of Isaiah, the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay. Elijah, you going to read? Uh, yeah, I will. Okay. okay. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will, not, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from, the t from that time and, and on forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thank you. Good. So that was Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, mm -hmm. right? So Isaiah knew that things weren't going well for most people. He knew they needed to see that God had a bigger plan. That God had promised to send us the greatest repair person of all to fix the broken world. The King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the greatest doctor. God's rescuer would be all of those things. So this candle represents that hope. And Emma is going to light the candle. Okay. Good. Good. Let's pray. Good. God, thank you for your plan in everything. We have hope because we can trust you to be in control when things seem scary. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 The angel. So what what kind of um, what were those names again that Isaiah had to talk mm -hmm. about Jesus? Wonderful Counselor. Oh. <laughs> Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. What do you think of the uh, hope that the Trillcoats shared with us, Reginald? Isaiah knew that things weren't going, going well for everyone. And he knew that people needed to know about God's bigger plan that God had promised to send us the greatest repair person of all time to fix this broken world, the king of kings, the prince of peace, the greatest doctor, God's rescuer, would be all those things. Reginald, or can I call you Reggie? <laughs> this candle represents that hope. Okay, Dan, um, first of all, it's me, Wayne. I'm not Reginald. Yeah, I don't know where you oh, got that from. Man. Anyway. Wayne, it is yeah. so good to see you here instead of Reginald. Well, thanks, man. That story, um, that gives me an idea on a game that we can play. And it'll help us to have some hope and fun. Hmm. Advent games? Yeah, Dan, you said this was an adventurous Christmas, so you can't have adventure without some adventurous games, right? Hmm. Uh, I guess so. You know, it makes me a little bit nervous when you come up with all kinds of oh, games. Oh, don't be nervous, Dan. These games help drive home the importance of Christmas. Okay, well, this is the candle of hope. So what do you got for us? Okay, so I love how the light from the candle represents hope. Hope and miraculously that it leads us into our first Advent game called Hoop and Light. That's right, it's Hoop and Light time. Get it? Hoop. Hope. And light, hope, and light. Got it? Got it. Pretty good, Got isn't it. it? Yeah. Okay, so what you guys are going to do at home is you guys are going to gather your family around, and you're going to have two teams on your family, okay? Now, you're going to have two teams. All you need is a couple trash cans or something like that, and or a hoop. So those are going to be your hoops, right? So you can either make a hoop with your hands like this with a circle, or you can hold trash cans, okay? And then your light, your balls of light, get this now, it's very technical, is going to be wadded up paper, Okay. So you take some, some paper here, you wad it up. These are your balls of light, okay? Now make sure each team gets the same amount of balls, okay? All right, here you go, Dan. There, so you got what, three of them there, and I got three of them. Okay, so one person's going to hold the light or the, hold the hoop, and the other people are going to toss your lights through your hoops. Now the winner, the winner is the first team to get all their lights through their hoops, okay? Got it? Okay, so you guys are going to pause the video in just a minute. We're going to play here. You guys are going to play back at home, and then we'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, you got it? Three, two, one. 
Light up those hoops. Let's go. Okay, I hope you guys had fun getting up, moving around, and playing a little game with your family. We had a lot of fun here. Now, if you're the winning team, I want you guys to stand up. Okay, you're going to pump your arms one time and say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, I Wait, won. I thought I won. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Oh. Hey. Oh. Woo. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Are you getting tired? Man, you know, Dan, um, actually, I think I need a nap. A nap? We're in the middle of Jingle Jam. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Jingle jam. Dan, Dan, I don't want a jam sandwich. I'm tired. I need to take a nap. I'm just going to lay over here and, and take a nap for a little bit while you guys do what you guys do. Oh. Oh. Man. Wayne oh. is definitely tired, which is sometimes normal for Christmas time between the traffic and the parties and Mommy. the noise and the acting lessons <laughs> and the constant busyness, which all, we can all get to in this can all become very unchristmassy, But still, there's something going on under all that that Snoopy. is what our next candle is all about. Let's take it out of the box and see if we can find out. Okay, we're gonna light another Advent candle, okay? The first week we, we light one, it was, that one's called Hope. <laughs> the second one, everybody ready? We're going to read some Bible verses, okay? Let's read. This is from Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, and to, to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby, see Mary and Joseph, and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. So the second one is the peace candle. This one, go ahead, talks about and reminds us the peace we have with God because of Jesus. The shepherds received some exciting news from the angels, and they quickly went to find this Prince of Peace. Let's say a little prayer, okay? Everyone bow, bow your head and pray. Thank you, God. Do you want to pray? Thank you. Say, do you want to say what I say? Say, thank you, God, for giving us the Prince of Peace. You want to say that, Pastor? Say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. For giving us the Prince of Peace. For giving us the Prince of Peace. Yes, may we find peace, too. Say, amen. 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 Oh, oh man, that nap felt pretty good. I was surprised I got tired so easily from that game. Well, you just missed a little piece from the Promise House. Oh, I did? Man, I hate it when I miss out on fun things like that. Well, 
not getting what we want and expect at Christmas, well, that can be, that can be we need to learn how to be joyful in all things, even naps. Oh, it's kind of like when you get that one weird present from a relative at Christmas and you have to pretend to be joyful, like, oh, tube socks. You know, this is kind of like the weirdest transition that we've ever had. Let's uh, see what's inside box number three. All right, I can't wait. Advent Here we calendar. go. A candle? I was hoping for candy for once. <laughs> nope. Well, let's take a look at, at how, how not getting what we expect can be part of a Christmas journey. Does anybody remember what the first two candles represents? Hope and peace. That's right, hope and peace. Let's find out more about the third candle. Luke, who wrote a lot about Jesus, shares an amazing story about Jesus' mom, Mary. She was just an ordinary, everyday girl until when something totally unexpected happened. Yoshika, will you please read to us the, wor the words found in Luke 1, 26-38. In the sixth month after Elizabeth had become pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. He was sent to a virgin. The girl was engaged to a man named Joseph. He came from the family line of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel greeted her and said, The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Mary was very upset because of his words. She wondered what kind of greeting this would be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord will make him a king like his father, David, of long ago. The Son of the Most High God will rule forever over his people. They are from the family line of Jacob. That kingdom will never end. How can this happen? Mary asked the angel. I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you. The power of the Most High God will cover you. So the Holy One that is born will be called the Son of God. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child even though she is old. People thought she could not have children. But she has been pregnant for six months now. That's because what God says will come true. I serve the Lord, Mary answered. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Then the angel left her. Thank you, Yoshika. Girls, will you light the third candle for us? Okay. This candle represents joy. Mary found herself in a situation that she didn't expect. And that reminds me um, of when I, have to, I had to stay in the hospital for about one month when I was pregnant with Lisa because I had an issue. And uh, we were all anxious. Oh, usually you don't have to stay in the hospital until your baby is about to come. And then, like I said, we were very anxious because we didn't know what was going to happen, just like Mary was. And But at the same time, we are very excited. And then it was joyful time for us because we knew that Lisa was coming soon. That's right. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, even when the unexpected happens to us, it is not unexpected to you. Thank you that we can trust in you. Lord, help us to find joy in all our circumstances. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's play a game. Um, let's say as many as many things as possible that bring us joy. Ready, set, go! Dogs. Ramen. Sushi. Cat. Ice cream. Vacation. Barbecue. Family. That's right, that's a good one. 
Man, it was really nice hearing about joy from the Andos. You know, I've been through many different types of Christmas seasons, some that are really good and some of them that didn't turn out quite like I wanted. But through all of those seasons, if I can just remember God is about joy, that he can give us joy even in the bad times, then I can, when I remember that, then Christmas becomes about the, the joy of, of Jesus Christ. Even when things are, don't seem like they're quite right, you can trust that God's going to work it out yep. and that he's not going to leave you in that dark place for very long. That's right. And sometimes you just have to find a way to put the pieces back together again in order to find joy. And you know what that reminds me? I think we got another play th- game to play, and this game is called Puzzled. Now, this is going to be really cool, and it's kind of fast, so you guys got to be ready. Okay? Do you guys like puzzles? Well, I hope so. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put some puzzles together, and then you guys need to see who in your family can be the fastest to identify what the puzzle is. Got it? Okay, so we're going to have three vid- You're going to watch three videos here, and you got to be really quick. Here they go. I hope you guys have fun with this one. Right. So how did you guys do? Are you guys puzzle wizards? Who, are, who in your family are the puzzle masters? Man, I bet you had fun guessing what those puzzles were. You know, these are one of my favorite things to do at Christmas. Hey, Dan, can I light the next candle? Hey, how do you know it's a candle? Well, I just assume since they were all, that's what they've all been. Well, wait, we'll see in just a minute. But first, all the kids st- at home, stand up, all of you. Are you all there standing? Oh, 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 that reminds me. Do you know why the farmer was so rich and successful? Why? Because he was outstanding in his field. Get it? (laughs) Outstanding, out, and standing. Man, I bet the kids had a good laugh at that one. (laughs) I'm sure they did. Thank you, Wayne. (laughs) Now, where was I? Oh, yes. All you kids standing up at home. Take a look at all the old people sitting around you. Seriously, take a real close look at them. Look into, the, look into their eyes, the, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your uncles, aunts, who are ever there. Whoever is there with you, they have a little secret. Let me tell you, they have trouble remembering what it was like when they were your age. Their life is completely different now because of you. When, when, when kids show up, the whole situation changes. <sighs> and they wouldn't change that for all the money in the world. Now, keep staring while I check out what's in box number four, or Wayne can. I bet it's a candle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see? I was right. It's a candle. (laughs) Yep. A candle. Are you surprised? No. (laughs) Okay. You can all sit down at home and light another candle on our way toward Christmas. It's time to learn about what the fourth candle represents. But before we do, who can tell me what the first three candles stand for?
have hope, peace, and joy. And today we're going to read about a baby that gives us all of this hope, peace, and joy. Levi, why don't you read to us from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Sure. In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. It was the first time a list was made of the people. Everyone went to their own town to be listed. So Joseph went also. He went from the town matters to Galilee to Judea. That is where Bethlehem, the town of David, was. Joseph went there because he belonged to a family line of David. He went there with Mary to be listed. Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby while Joseph and Mary were there. The time came for a child to be born. She gave birth to her very first baby. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth and placed him in a manger. That's because there was no guest room where they could stay. stop. Stay. God was sending his son to earth and with him his love. That's right. Levi, will you light the fourth candle for us? That represents yes. love. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today in awe of your amazing love. We pray that everything we do and say will reflect the love of Christ to the world. Amen. Amen. Now let's sing about this baby of love. Babies change things, but the baby we are celebrating at Christmas changed everything for everyone, everywhere. The love shown by the, God, by the Son of God leaving heaven and coming down to be one of us is more than I can imagine. Love does oh. that every single time. It's bigger and more fantastic than your mind or heart can hold. This Christmas... I pray that love is a huge part of everything you do, everything you give, and everything you feel. Did you say baby? That's kind of the point of Christmas. Well, you know what? I think it's time for another game. And I don't care how old you guys are at home, you guys are going to have fun with this one. That's right. You know, babies, they take a ton of care, right? They take special attention, and they even eat their own baby food, right? Their own special food. That's right, they do. And that's where our game comes in. So in honor of those seven-pound noisemakers that we love so much, 
we're going to make our own baby food. That's right. It's going to be great. All you guys need to do at home is every person gets to pick out one ingredient, okay? Now, it can be something tasty or it can be something not so tasty. Don't make it a vegetable, though. Don't put no vegetables in there. Trust me. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick out your ingredient, okay? Like Dan's got our ingredients right there. You're going to put them in a bowl or a blender, and then you're going to mix them all up, make sure they're all mixed up really good, and then everyone, and I mean everyone, gets to take a bite. That's right. All you need is some, something like some crackers or honey or chocolate chips, some good stuff like that. You mix it up in a blender, and then you, everybody takes a piece. All right. So while we're working on it here, you guys are going to work on it at home, and we'll be back in just a few minutes to see how it tasted. Stop this video in three, two, one. That looks we pretty go. good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I like eating fun things. Okay. Let's see here. Mmm. 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 Good thing we're not in video or anything, so they're catching this. Man, I tell you what. Whoa. Man, who knew besides Elf that candy, candy cane, candy corn, syrup, and spaghetti would taste so good together? Oh, I'm not sure it's that tasty, Wayne. Oh, man, I think it is. <laughs> you know, Christmas is so many things to so many different people. And that's great because the candle at the center of it all is called the Christ candle. It's Jesus Christ who came to save us all, to give us hope, joy, peace, and love. So bringing in all those beautiful things to all people all over the world, in all cultures, they can all look a little different at Christmas time. Christmas is, is only possible because our journey for Christmas begins and ends <laughs> as we look at the Christ candle in the middle. The one that represents what Christmas is all about, God's Son. Jesus is the one who gave us his life for all of us. He is the one who rose again and lives today. He is the one who will come back again. No matter what Christmas looks like at your house, whether you have a real tree or an artificial tree or no tree at all, whether you eat dinner from a can or over at grandma's house or you go out to eat or with a new neighbor, no matter what, Jesus wants to be the center of everything you do. When we keep him at the, as the most important thing in Christmas and every other single day, we understand real hope and joy and love and peace. This candle shines so bright in our lives that it helps put everything else in our life in the right light. That is the greatest gift ever. It was the first gift of Christmas. It will be the greatest gift anyone ever receives. Man, I'm so glad that I didn't miss out on this last candle. Because of Christmas, there is hope and there is peace and joy, and love, all because Jesus was born to fulfill God's plan for us all. I'm so glad about that, too. You know what? That makes me uh, so happy. I think I want to just sing and dance a little bit, Dan. <laughs> you know what? I do, too. Let's sing a song together. Thanks so much for joining us today. We hope that you have a fantastic Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.
Blessed Christmas morn Miss Christy here. Wow, 2020 has been crazy. And while we are disappointed that we could not have our annual children's Christmas play, how fortunate were we to be able to experience Simply Christmas and Jingle Jam. We got to sing songs, we got to play some fun games and some silly games. We got to see some friends, and we even got to meet a new friend named Reginald. You better keep your eyes out for him. And most importantly, we learned about Christmas. We learned all of the hope, the love, the joy, the peace that we can have because of the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day. And what a special gift that is. I hope you and your family had a lot of fun. I know I did. Now, at the end of our Christmas programs, we traditionally celebrate with a birthday cake for Jesus. And I thought we would do the same today. So I'm gonna light our candles. And if you and your family would agree to singing happy birthday with me, maybe we can sing one more song, okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. You know what? I wish I could share this cake with you, but I can't. However, I bet you and your family could make a birthday cake for Jesus. And 
I have an even better idea. When you go to the store to get your ingredients to make your own birthday cake for Jesus, buy two of everything. That way you can make a packet of a birthday cake for Jesus to give to a neighbor, a friend, someone that you care about, and just share the love of Jesus at Christmas. I hope you take that idea and run with it. Now, raise your hand if you want cake. I know I do. Guys, it was a lot of fun. I cannot wait to celebrate with you again, but until then, Merry Christmas. Bye everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Bonsai and I are wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday ho, Season. Ho, 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 ho.